Good evening and welcome to the Nevis Newscast for today, Monday, July 6th, 2015. I am your presenter, Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. The Medical University of the Americas, Nevis Island Administration, MUA and IA Scholarship Committee today announced the recipients of its 2015-2016 scholarships. Permanent Secretary Nicole slack Liburd represents the Ministry of Health on that committee. The two recipients this year are Ms. Cleticia Daniel on my immediate left and Ms. Pearl Bergen on my far left. Ms. Daniel will be pursuing studies at University of the West Indies in Mona, Jamaica in the area of biotechnology and Ms. Pearl Bergen will be pursuing studies also at the University of the West Indies in Mona in the area of chemistry. Every year when the scholarship is announced, there are various priorities that are identified and these two young ladies have satisfied those priorities. We want to, at this time, thank the other members of the MUA-NIA Scholarship Committee, including President of the Medical University of the Americas, Steve Roger, for participating in the process. Assistant Secretary in the Premier's Ministry, Kevin Barrett, is also a member of the Scholarship Committee. We had a, a good team um, of students who came in for the interviews and we were very much impressed with these two young ladies. Um, their application and the interviews were really um, um, high class interviews, if I could say that. And we were very, very impressed with their, their responses to the answers that we, we, we posed to them. And we are sure, we are very sure that we have selected the, the, the best of the bunch who came in for the interviews. On behalf of the other members of the MUA NIA Scholarship Committee, I would like to say once again congratulations to our um, recipients. I know they are going to go off and, and, and make this, this country proud and um, they have promised that they are going to come back and make their contribution and whatever they acquire and learn I'm sure it's going to impact our island positively. Cleticia Daniel and Pearl Bergen, who were selected from among some 10 candidates who qualified, expressed their appreciation for being awarded the scholarships. I would like to thank the MUA NIA Scholarship Committee for granting me with this spectacular opportunity. I can now go off to UE to pursue my dreams and studies in biotechnology, and I know I can acquire very important information that would be beneficial both for myself and my country in the, the likes of science and technology. First of all, I would like to thank God from whom all blessings flow. I would like to thank all those who encouraged me to pursue this scholarship opportunity. Thanks to the MUA NIA Scholarship Committee for choosing me. I know that science is a need in this country and I consider it to be a service industry in that by anyone that pursues science, they're serving others and serving their country as well. And I'll do my best to make the country proud of me. The MUA NIA scholarship, which values up to $22,500 US dollars per year, allows persons to pursue undergraduate studies in the areas of science and education. Slack Liburd and Barrett are encouraging prospective students to listen for next year's scholarship application call and to apply. The St. Kitts and Nevis Fire and Rescue Services annual summer safety program continues to yield benefits for the students who participate, resulting in a reduction in the number of fire-related accidents involving children. The Fire and Rescue Services will once again be facilitating the three-day program for primary school students on Nevis. It will take place from 9 a.m. to noon from Wednesday 8th to Friday 10th July at the Jessup's Community Center. The theme for this year's program is creating an environment of change where our children feel safe, happy and valued. Fire Sub-Officer Mavis White Archibald is the program coordinator, while Fire Officer Kervin Boyds is one of the facilitators. We intend to cover the topics of um, fire safety, road safety and water safety in terms of the ocean. As it relates to the fire safety, the fire personnel would be the coordinator for those fire-related subjects. Um, traffic safety will have 
a police officer will come in to teach that um, disaster preparedness will have someone from disaster management office and water safety will have collaboration with fisheries and the coast guard and the second day when we're having the coast guard it would go until one because the plan is to take the children to Paradise Beach to see the operations of the Coast Guard. Archibald is appealing to parents to register their children for the summer safety program. Forms can be collected from any of the island's primary schools. There is a lot to be gained from this program, whereas the children will be taught in their various topics and take it home to their probably parents, siblings or whomever they have there. And over the years, this program has really been a blessing where there has been a mass decline as it relates to fire in relation to children. So I just want to say again, um, parents, send your children out. If there are children who would come after the registration would have ceased, they might not be able to get a t-shirt because we have already collected our 60 t-shirts for our division. But the children can still come out. They would get their package. According to Archibald, each participant will be awarded a certificate of completion and may be selected to participate in a similar program on St. Kitts later this month. At the end of each afternoon, you'll have a, a review and the, out, the most outstanding children were, would be the ones that we chose to go over to St. Kitts. Uh, mind you, they would be given their certificate there, but at the grand finale in St. Kitts, they would be given their prizes for chief and or fire chief, deputy fire chief. Transportation will be provided for the participants who are asked to assemble at their respective schools by 8.30 a.m. Snacks and lunch will also be provided. St. Kitts and Nevis will host the two-day gathering of some of the best minds in the Caribbean starting tomorrow, Tuesday, July 7th at the St. Kitts Marriott Hotel. The National Commission for UNESCO is expected to host the sub-regional Slave Route Conference, which will bring together experts and representatives from across the region. The theme, Beyond Reparations, Strengthening the Slave Route Project in the Caribbean region, is being used as a guide for the discussions. Ras Iroy from the local Rastafarian organization says he welcomes the discussions and urges where possible that persons participate in this movement. The black man actual, ha, actually had to pay reparations because in the documentary released by Hillary Beckles, he would tell you over some 27 million dollars that the enslaved Africans still had to pay and they paid it in their they work on the little plantations and the so-called apprenticeship and so on. So we actually paid a greater part of reparation to the white man than we, actually, than we got anything. And so there is no doubt um, if the higher powers don't want to sit at the table and negotiate, it would probably move on to some kind of court, court issue. Um, and the commission, as you know, would have identified you know, um, legal legal um, firms and so on to take this matter forward. Regional experts such as Professor Hilary Beckles, Dr. Ahmed Reed, and Dr. Tara Innes are some of the eminent persons who will attend the two-day forum. While on St. Kitts, there will be a public symposium where the general public can engage the panel. This will be held tomorrow Tuesday at the Sir Cecil Jacobs Auditorium at the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, and the theme is is the fight for reparations in the Caribbean subregion, pipe dream or reality. We are hoping that from this symposium that we can get a clear understanding of where we are as a people, where we're going, how are we, where are we placed in the, the scope of reparations. I, I, I for one, and I know Weber also wants to know, when is he, when is he going to get his check? Well. <laughs> Reparations is not really just about getting a check. Mm -hmm. It's about restoring to us our, our dignity, for one. You know, because so many people, look and look, you can look at what is happening in America right now or with black people and how we have lost our dignity because we were enslaved. 
And when we stop thinking of ourselves as slaves or coming from slaves, then we will think of ourselves more highly. Esther Brooks is one of the persons from Nevis who will participate in the two-day conference. And she too encourages participation from a wide as possible cross-section of the community. Coming up... Once you get in, you eat and you drink. And it's, it's, um, we're, we're creating a very good atmosphere to showcase the chefs, the local chefs that we have on Nevis. The details after this break. Yeah, tell me you Give me some give me some give me some give me some Culture of nice. I'm This is going to be the nicest culture. Welcome back. Tickets for the first Nevision Chef Mango Feast are now available at the Nevis Tourism Authority and the Hotel and Tourism Association at the Sands Complex in St. Kitts. The event, which is a part of the NTA's Mango and Food Festival, is slated for Sunday, July 12th at Uwali Beach. Greg Phillip is the Chief Executive Officer of the Nevis Tourism Authority. The way the Division Chef's Mango Feast really works is that People who are participating in it, and when I say participating, who are coming to dine at that event will essentially purchase a ticket, it's 50 EC dollars. It allows you entry into the venue, and once you're in, each chef, each of the local division chefs will have a station, and you essentially go from station to station, and you get to sample and eat what they have prepared. Because remember, what they have prepared would be something that is extremely unique, and what we've given them as a challenge, each chef, they cook one thing, whatever their speciality is. Their challenge is the challenge that all the chefs have who come here to Nevis to participate in the Mango Food Festival. Their challenge is to cook something and whatever that something is, it must incorporate mangoes. Be creative and incorporate it. That's the, that's the type of um, thing that we, that's the challenge every year with the Mango Food Festival. Philip also told us the purpose of hosting the Mango Feast. We want to make sure that we have an opportunity to highlight the local chefs that we have here on island. It, it creates a sort of fun atmosphere and for us on Nevis, it, it's really an opportunity to help to inspire us, not, and not just people who are chefs, but people who cook on Nevis, to use what we have locally and, and really transform them and make them a part of our daily diet. And this, I think, um, we would take another step into accomplishing to ensure that we showcase the talent that our chefs have here and the fact that they can actually use what we have here on the island of Nevis to make into something good. Meantime, Philip reminds of and invites the public to participate in the upcoming Mango Madness Street Fair on July 10th at the DR Walwyn Plaza. It's basically everything mango related. Um, all the agro-processors who have things that they make from mangoes, um, people who sell mangoes, people who would be selling food related to mangoes or just food that are just indigenous to Nevis. The participants of the Junior Caiso and the Talented Youth Competitions were officially launched at a fashion show last evening, Sunday, July 5th, at Caribbean Cove under the patronage of Patricia Claxton. Among the dignitaries present at the fashion show was Deputy Premier and Minister of Culture, the Honorable Mark Brantley. I want to send out a special appeal to divisions overseas to say to them that they want to come home again as they did in large numbers last year to participate in our culture hour. I want to thank the schools that are participating this year. You would realize that not all the schools are participating. It is my hope that for the next installment of Culture Armor, we could have each and every primary school on the island represented here for the Talented Youth Contest. I want to commend the organizers today, particularly the subcommittees, this idea of merging the Junior Kaiso and the Talented Teen and bringing them together for this launch, I think, is an innovation, and it demonstrates that notwithstanding that we've been doing this for 41 years, that we continue to think about creative ways to make it better and 
and indeed to provide the kind of festival that all of us as individuals can be proud of. The participants for five schools participating in the Mr. and Miss Talented Youth Contest were sashed by their sponsors and then introduced themselves. Greetings. I am Cheyenne Tyson. And I am Brad Spinefield. And we are representing the Joyce in Library Primary School, proudly sponsored by Lefko and Golden Rock Hill. Remember, it's culture, fat and fun. It's culture on our 41. We are Chesney Smith and Damari Mitchell We're representing the Iowa Waters Primary School, proudly sponsored by RBTT Bank. We are Dashini and Davil, representing the Nevis Academy, proudly sponsored by National Caribbean Insurance Company and Indian Summers. The evening, ladies and gentlemen, proudly sponsored by the Four Seasons Resort Estate and Graceful's Product and ODB Brisbane. We are proud ambassadors of the St. Thomas's Primary School, 12 year old Janiko Matthew and 12 year old Nicolatu. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are Shamali Newton and Jerry Hamilton. And we are representing the Charleston Primary School and proudly sponsored by the Bank of Nevis Limited and Nevis Air and Seaport Authority. It's culture, fit and fun. Culture Rama 41. Seven participants for the Junior Kaiso contest also introduced themselves. My name is Chelsea Powell and my Calypso name is Lady Blue. My name is Marquis Washington and my, my Calypso name is Mighty J. Strike three! I'm coming for the monarchy. I am Akiro Nisbet. Calypso name, Prince Akiro. My name is Sajaro Silverton and my Calypso name is Lil Taj. Greeting, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a special good night for one and all. My name is Anila Faithi. My stage name is Princess K. Good evening, everyone. My name is Shamari Mitchell and my Calypso name is the Mighty Suki. And I am the reigning, defending Junior Calypso King. Patron Patricia Claxton graced the stage while past chair of the talented youth pageant Shirley Wilkes read her biography. Delivering remarks were Executive Director of the Nevis Culturama Secretariat Antonio Libert and a Chairperson for Culture 41 Deborah Tyrrell. The host of the evening's event was Rohan Isles and Ursia Blake delivered the vote of thanks. Other entertainment included performances by reigning Miss Talented Youth Vanessa Hull the students of Nevis Academy, Music Against Crime and Violence, Macav, and the Core Band. That's it for tonight's edition of the Nevis Newscast. Thank you for viewing. Good night.